Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, is good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 in the NIV translation. Good morning to all of you thriving people of God. This is Pastor Enrique Brooks of Thrive Church, and we thank you for joining us today on this thriving Thursday. Yes, what a wonderful way for you to start your day, holding fast to your commitment to pray. And we believe at Thrive that a church that prays together is a church that will indeed thrive together. And so I want to give, uh, give a thanks for each of you that joined us last night for our midweek um, prayer 365. Um, I would even say call it a Bible study group. Um, those of you that joined last night, we truly give God praise for your presence. Amen. I learned that it was a fantastic time. For those of you who may have been wondering, well, where has Pastor Brooks been during the uh, during the group on Wednesday nights? Um, I have to let you know my 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 work week. You know, I'm bivocational, and so my work week has changed, and my schedule has changed, and I'm actually working in the evening on Wednesday nights. And so what that has given us is the opportunity to, of course, utilize those who are certainly capable. And we give God praise for Minister Clark as well as Sister Cynthia. Amen. As they have been facilitating those groups um, in a powerful way. Amen. And as we continue to lean forward, I ask that we would keep, um, of course, keep our the body of Christ as a whole in prayer. Um, but Sister Cynthia, she is actually, she lives in Texas. I'm over in Austin, Texas. And as y'all know that they've been dealing with um, the snow over there. And so I ask that y'all would keep them in prayer. I know they've been dealing with power outages. And, um, and of course, as well as the rest of the nation, amen, certainly keep them lifted. I also ask you to keep Sister Tierra lifted as well as her family. She lost a matriarch in her family. Her grandmother passed away. Amen. Uh, just, uh, I believe, yesterday or the day before. So please keep her family lifted in prayer as well. Amen. And so um, let's go ahead and press forward into our devotion for this morning. All this week, we've been in a theme that's been, been pulled from Sunday's message titled, I'm All In. I want you to say that this morning, say it aloud right there where you are. Say, I'm all in my goodness. I'm I, this. This thing really gets me excited because when we say this and every time we say this, I begin to envision the transformation that's happening in our lives. I, I envision how much more effective the body of Christ will be because there's a group of people that have made the decision to be all in, to not just dip our big toes in the water to see what it feels like. You know, that's what we do when we're getting in the pool. But we've decided to fully throw ourselves in the work. Yes, to to carry out God's will in the earth. That is the expansion of his kingdom. Yes, from heaven to here on earth through our everyday living. And in order to do that, he requires that we would offer our whole lives as a living sacrifice unto him. Now, Paul talked about this in Romans chapter 12, as he's teaching those at Rome, the church there at Rome, he's teaching them how to live in this New Testament. Amen. How to live this life in Christ. And he's letting them know that, hey, uh, I encourage you in response or in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper 
worship. Now, the word that we are focusing on today or the quality that we're focusing on today, which is another level of commitment. Somebody say commitment. Yes, I've got to be committed in order to fully give my life, in order to be all in. This is all about commitment. He uses this word, says that that we must be holy. He said that our lives must be holy as being a living sacrifice. We must be holy. Everybody say holy. Now, this word holy, uh, it, it may have been Um, used very loosely in the church um, over the course of time. Sometimes we even use that word to describe a certain type of church. For instance, a church may praise God a little bit more and we'll refer to them as a holiness church. My goodness. But to tell you the truth, uh, Paul is letting us know that all of us should be considered holy. Yes, Every last one of us should be identified as being holy. Now, what does holy mean? The word holy essentially is representing a level of commitment, because what it means is that a person has been set apart for a holy purpose, of course, for God. So you've been set apart or a thing has been set apart for a holy purpose purpose or for a godly purpose, or we could say consecrated. Yes. And so my brothers and sisters, when, when Paul is saying that we must be holy, what he's saying is that now your life, your life has been set apart. It must be completely set apart from the things of this world. No longer are we just simply blending in. He goes into that in verse two, where he says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. He was already talking about this when he was referring to being holy. So therefore, that means I don't live any kind of way. I don't live loosely. I don't live aimlessly. But instead, my life has been set aside for the purposes of God. That means that I am fully committed. That means that I'm all in and I am living a holy life. So when you have people who may look at you and say, well, why don't you do this anymore? Or or why don't you do that? It's not that you're trying to be a, a party pooper, so to speak, but you've made an identification or recognition that your life is special and so is theirs. But you've identified that God desires to use you for a holy purpose, for a heavenly purpose, for the expansion of his kingdom here on earth. Now, the thing is, when God desires to use us, he doesn't desire to just simply use a piece of us, but he wants to use all of us. So the best thing that we can do, Paul refers to this as part of our true and proper worship. Yes, the best thing that we can do is we can take our whole lives and we can dedicate them for God's use. That's where the old song would come in. What we would say, if you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. There's a uh, there's a, a powerful thing that happens when we make the declaration that God, my life is not my own. And I recognize that it's to you that I belong. So I'm going to offer myself to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to set my life uh, aside for you. I'm going to I'm going to live in the purpose that you have designed me to live in. I'm not going to walk aimlessly. I'm not going to partake in any and everything because I recognize that not all things are honorable or useful or expedient uh, for the purposes of God. Yes, it might be, quote unquote, lawful, but it doesn't make sense with the purpose that God has for me. He's created me to be an expander of his kingdom. And so when I go to work, I won't show up late like other people do, because I understand that, God, you've set me aside for a holy purpose. God, you've chosen me to 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 expand your kingdom 
when it comes to my wife, I won't talk trash to her like I might see other people talk trash to their wife. No, because I understand that you've placed me here to make sure that even heaven expands in my household. So I'm going to love my wife the way that Christ loves the church. I'm not going to be a backbiter or a nitpicker or be a negative Nancy or a whining Wanda because Lord, hallelujah, in view of your mercy, I offer my body as a living sacrifice. So I'm not going to waste my words on negative things, but I'm going to focus on the positive things because God, I have set myself aside for a holy purpose today, my brothers and sisters. I encourage you to be a holy sacrifice. We must be a whole sacrifice, a living sacrifice. And today I encourage you to be a holy sacrifice. Be holy, as the Bible says, because he is holy. Yes, he doesn't. God does not apply himself or allow himself to be used for just anything, but only for those things that are in alignment with his purpose. And so when we do this, I believe that there will be complete transformation. I believe that God will move like never before in our lives. And at that point, we will be living our best lives. Yes. So let's pray today on this thriving Thursday that we would be holy sacrifices so that we would be able to live our best life. Father, we give you praise and we give you honor because God, you are good and your mercy endures forever. And Father, today we we confess our faults before you. Father, we acknowledge that there's somewhere that we have fallen off, somewhere that we've made a mistake. And Father, we are in need of your forgiveness. So Lord, purge us with hyssop this morning. Yes, cleanse us with the blood of Jesus And Lord, make us white as snow. And Father, we thank you that you are faithful and just to do that very thing. And Father, this day we say thank you. We start this day off on this thriving Thursday by saying thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you for every way that you have provided for us. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for peace of mind. Father, thank you for your joy that is our strength. Father, I thank you for restoration in the life of my brothers and sisters. And Father, from this place, Father, we declare that our ask today is that you would empower every one of my brothers and sisters to live a holy life. Father, you said it in your word in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, that you've given us everything we need to live a godly life. So, Father, let us activate that today. Let us be fully committed. Let us be all in. I declare it over the life of my brother. I declare it over the life of my sister that we will not be aimless, that we will not be fruitless. But, Father, we will be intentional and we will be fruitful because, Father, we have set our lives aside for your holy purposes. Hallelujah. Father, use us, God, for your desire. Father, use us, my goodness, in the workplace. Father, use us in the marketplace. Father, use us in our families. God, use us in every area of our lives. Father, we don't give you just a piece of us. Father, we give you all of us. Understanding even that that word holy means to be one. So, Father, we're not divided in our in our in our sacrifice. Father, we're not divided in our commitment to you. But Father, we are complete, completely committed, fully committed to you. And Lord, I thank you right now that lives are being changed. Yes, every day that we are coming to you in prayer, that there is greater transformation that's taking place. And Father, as we close out this prayer, we pray the way that Jesus taught us to pray. And we say, our Father, who art in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Father, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the hand of the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, amen. 
God bless you all. This is Pastor Enrique Brooks of Thrive Church, and I give God praise for you being here with us on this Thriving Thursday. Hey, you are living your best life, and I encourage you to be a holy sacrifice. Yes, give God everything you've got. Set aside your life for the purposes of the kingdom of God, and you will continue to live your best life. I love each of you. God loves each of you. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye.